Welcome back to the garage everyone. In today's video we're going to show you something that is definitely not cool. Alright, so I've been driving this car kind of hard this week trying to work out all my little gremlins. Uh, get this thing as mechanically sound as I can. Put a couple of hundred miles on it this week. Uh, I was heading up the interstate this morning and I noticed that my temperature gauge was just peeking over that uh, that 100 uh, degrees Celsius mark, which is, you know, it's getting a little warm there. You know, that's around, that's a little more than 212. It was probably 215, maybe even 220 degrees at one point. One thing I did do later on after I parked, I got out and I checked the heat on this hose and I checked the heat on the lower hose. And the difference was, well, the, there was a lot of difference between the between the two. I think you would expect some, uh, seeing as how, you know, that's a radiator. If it's a large difference, uh, I think that is, a, it may be a sign that the thermostat is, is starting to go out in this thing. Um, also... The thermostat in these cars is, I think, it's either 174 or 176. Uh, this is the one I got from uh, one of our local parts houses around here. I'm not, it doesn't, I don't believe it says the uh, the temperature setting on it. But anyway, from what I read, it's around, it's one, either 174 or 176 degrees. So it's a fairly low thermostat. This engine, and today it was only about 85 degrees outside. So to, this engine had no business running over 212 degrees Fahrenheit today. So I, I'm going to try the thermostat first, and then uh, we're going to see what happens. All right, first step is drain the coolant out of the radiator. Uh, what you've got under the near the driver's side is a uh, plastic screw there. And you just get a, uh, a nice uh, flat bladed screwdriver on it and uh, away you go. So we're going to let that drain out. All right, as luck would have it, our little thermostat replacement job just turned into a, an all weekend affair. Probably a week. Uh, I just broke off that bolt right there. Got a little too aggressive with it and pop. So... That means that I am probably going to have to remove this housing from the engine so that I can take this off of the car and drill out that, uh, that old bolt. All right, we've got the, uh, all three bolts out of the housing there. And uh, you can see, as fortune would favor the uh, idiots, I have a small amount of bolts poking out of the housing there that might... I might be able to get some penetrant down in there and grab that with some channel locks or some vice grips and get that off of there. So that's what we're going to try next. All right, we went ahead and got the uh, thermostat housing off of the car. Uh, since I've removed the hose from this fitting, I'll, I guess I'll go ahead and replace the, uh, the lower radiator hose. The upper radiator hose looks, it looks brand new, but I guess best practice would involve uh, replacing them both anyway as a matter of good measure. Just taking a look at this housing seems to be in pretty good shape. The seal is is hardened and uh, has seen better days. I'm not sure if this is the original thermostat that was in the car but we're gonna find out. I'm gonna get this thing out of here and do some more inspection. Well I found something interesting. Unless the Germans in 1984 had a wild hair and started using Chinese made thermostats in their engines. This is not the original part. Of course, the car had 100, it's got 190,000 miles on it. So, you know, yeah, this, this may be our problem right here. So the one I have, you know, it's not a Mercedes part, but well, it was made in Israel. So, hey, you know, that's something. They're pretty good folks. It's a Murray, whoever the hell that is. Okay, taking a look at the new part. Uh, it does in fact say Germany on the side of it and says, furthermore, it says Motorrad. Okay, well, there you go. Only problem is I don't have the, the proper gasket. I, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to order that. 
All right, a little update on what's going on here. So I tried to uh, use a um, use. I tried to use words and make a video, but I was unsuccessful. All right, a little update on where we are now. So I tried to use a cold chisel and a hammer to uh, punch or uh, sort of uh, chip that uh, broken bolt out of the hole. It was pretty. It was stuck in there pretty bad, so I, I couldn't do that. So I went ahead and took the whole housing off of the uh, the side of the engine there. Got ourselves a nasty little mess there to clean up uh, before too long, but we'll take it back over here to the bench. And here is the uh, the other half of the uh, thermostat housing. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's this coolant system needs to be gone through anyway. Um, looks like we have some some I don't know what this is some corrosion or something on the um, on the housing. I'm not sure. I'm not entirely sure they have the right coolant in the engine to be honest with you, because the coolant in here is green. I I don't know if green coolant was called called for in this vehicle, to be honest with you. So anyway, I'm I'm gonna drain. I'm gonna flush the block with a water hose, get all that stuff out of there and put new stuff in there. So uh this is what we have going on. We have to get this bolt out of here, this broken off bolt, right there. So I tried to uh grind a little slot in it to use a screwdriver that didn't work. It's it's in there really well, so something about that vibration in my drill press well, I got a clean hole all the way through the bolt there now what are you gonna do about it well I think I'll try to get something up inside there and twist all right just a little update here on the thermostat fiasco and lo and behold I screwed around and, in, and ended up uh, cracking that housing so fail but never fear, eBay is here. So I did find a salvage part on eBay for around $50 and it's gonna be here next week sometime. So this is where the thermostat housing bolts to the engine. I'll need a gasket there. The thermostat housing connects to this very short stubby hose, obviously. I'm also gonna change out the water pump. There's the water pump right there. I figure if I'm into this the way I am now, I might as well go ahead and replace the water pump. So I'm gonna get one of those on order because they're not very expensive. I think about $35 you can pick one up. The cooling system is the most important part of an engine, right? Uh, forget about it. You can make it run without a cooling system, but it will only run for about five minutes <laughs> before, it seizes, before it seizes up. So the cooling system, in my humble opinion, is the most important part of the engine. Um, so it's got to be right. So we're going to have a new thermostat. We're going to have a new water pump. And oh yeah, and I ended up, I broke the thermal vacuum switch that goes to the EGR. So I'm going to go ahead and replace that too. I've got that one on order as well. Hey, well that's all for now folks. I appreciate you stopping by the channel here. It's going to be a few more days before I get this car buttoned up and get everything back together. I got parts on order. I got gaskets. I got water pump thermostat housing new hoses coming in so i've got all these things that will be arriving next week and we'll get this car back together and one sideline item i'll have to i think i'm going to do a little degreasing on the front of the engine too and get this uh, cleaned up a little bit so hey thanks everyone for stopping by my channel please like and subscribe talk to you later